Ladies and gentlemen, this week on Tales of Tyria, we've got some good blog posts to talk about, as well as a few links and a whole big discussion on role playing. Stay tuned, it's gonna be great. And not in that way. Watch me. Yes, welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria, number 39 here in the Sound Strategy Network. You can find us on YouTube, Sound Strategy Network is the username. Uh, we've got a, a great show here today, glad you got a hold of the program, however you may have found it. Tell a friend or two, won't you? We are almost live from uh, the... Um, well, I can't tell you where we are, but we're somewhere in Lion's Arch, that's all you need to know. Uh, so, let's talk about role-playing today, ladies and gentlemen. I know a whole bunch of people disconnected already before I even got a chance to explain, but just hang in there, because it's in the name of our genre, all right? You're playing a massively multiplayer online role-playing game, all right? That's what we're talking about today, and it's coming up right after the news. But before we get there, let me quickly remind you guys, if you want to send us feedback, the feedback email is feedback at talesofteria.com. And don't forget, we always record live on Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, except when we don't, which is today, we're on at 4, but we told you about that last week, so it's okay. Also wanted to let everybody know that the Tales, uh, sorry, the Team Legacy community events continue, and uh, as we hinted at before, there's going to be yet another Team Fortress 2 week for the Team Legacy Guild Wars 2 community. Uh, so we invite everyone that watches Tales of, Tales of Tyria, everyone from the Guild Wars 2 community, and everybody from the Team Legacy community to come and join us. Uh, this is going to get kicked off the night uh, after the beta weekend number three. So right after you get out of your Guild Wars 2 and you got nothing else to do, you can come join all your Guild Wars 2 pen friends in withdrawal playing uh, Guild Wars 2, uh, uh, Team Fortress 2, unfortunately, a different sequel. Um, and that's going to be right after Tales of Tyrio on Monday, July 23rd. So definitely check that out. And that is a good point to point out. Again, for the beta weekend, we will move the show from Sunday to Monday so that we don't have to stop playing, uh, as it were. Uh, so I guess with that... Uh, oh, by the way, there is a link to all the information about the Tales, uh, t Team Fortress... Wow, okay. Team Fortress 2 event... In the show notes, check them out. They're at talesofteria.com, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can find them in the description. All right, now that we've got that massive amount of ridiculous info dump out of hand, let me introduce myself. I am Bridger. I'm your host for today. And joining me, we have a number of people from the Guild Wars 2 role-playing community. And uh, welcome. We have first a Zendi. Welcome. Hi, I'm Zendi. I come from Sweden, but I currently live in Sheffield. Um, I will be Sheffield playing is in the United Master. Kingdom, is that correct? Yes, in England, indeed. Excellent. Uh, I'll be playing. I'll be playing a um, necromancer called Cybill Gray, amongst other things. Awesome. Thanks for well, having me. <laughs> Excellent. We're glad to have you, Strider. Also joining us. Welcome, sir. Hey, everyone. I'm Strider. Or some people call me Andrew. I'm from New York City. Um, I'm. My two guilds right now are Swift Shadow Company and Keepers of the Phoenix. They're two great guilds. I'm a North American roleplay community organizer, and it's great to be here. All right, excellent. And lastly, we have Tot, also from GW2RP.com. Hi, I'm Tot. I'm from the UK. I will be playing many different characters <laughs> when um, Guild Wars 2 launches. Um, and I am roleplaying moderator on GuildWars2Roleplayers.com. Altaholics Anonymous, yes. Uh, um, yes, I meant <laughs> that too, I think. Um, Excellent. Uh, now, uh, I know a lot of people are like, Where's Freelancer? He's my only hope for PvP discussion. Not this week. Sit down. 
Uh, we talk a lot about PvP in the last couple of weeks. We're trying to get some, some PvE stuff, perspectives going on uh, today. But I, I am going to try to keep it um, a, a very interesting show, even for those of you who may not necessarily be into the whole role-playing thing at the moment. Uh, I, I Please, bear with us. We're going to get to uh, some good stuff today. So uh, with that having been said, we're going to get Kai and Vega and Freelancer back next week. But I said to them, I, I sent out a message to the group, and I said, so we're going to do role-playing next week. Who wants in? And I don't think my email server was working or something happened because I got no responses. And then after I typed another one like, is this thing on? Hello? And they're like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. So we got a whole new crew of people. So welcome. All right. Let us jump into first a bit of feedback from last week. I got a number of emails that just go to show that I need to really pay attention when I say things because people will hear them. Um, <laughs> when I said last week that we had only seven more episodes of Tales of Tyria, I had a number of people that said, "Are you stopping the show before when the show when the <laughs> game launches? No, you got to keep it going." And I said, "No, that's not the point. The point was that it was simply a countdown. Like there's only seven more shows, and then the game is released. Not that the show is stopping after seven episodes. So just to clarify that, um, now it's six shows. Yes, so close. <laughs> All right. Also, closer." Oh, Got a bit of feedback about last week's dungeon episode. Uh, we had a we had to pull some strings and get some people on last minute, so we didn't prepare as much as we could have. Uh, but we got some good criticism. This one was from uh, Lackvar of Bone. Uh, he said, "Me and friends ran two of the dungeons in the last beta and got stuck on the third. I wrote a long article about our impressions, and uh, I've got links to those in the show notes because they're pretty good. So if you want another good take on dungeons, check out the links there in the show notes." Uh, he says, "We also don't know a lot of things like oh sorry." We didn't know a lot of things, like not to use CC on the spider or to look for the buff on the other guy. The fact is, these two bosses are only going to be trivial now that we have that information. Uh, please, if you touch on dungeons again before the next beta, focus on three things. The NPC events are the real challenge. The big disparity between the difficulty of the three explorables. He says that the char dungeon explorable, uh, if like you get a, get a choice, you follow one of three people. If you follow the char one, that one's much easier, and the asura uh, is much harder than the uh, than the char one. Also, end bosses appear to be more entertainment than challenge. They were unable to die. Uh, th that is to say, the people trying to finish the dungeon were unable to die on the end bosses. I guess they were saying it's too easy. So, there you go. Thank you very much, Lakvar of Bone. Hopefully that will uh, provide some good info to people. And uh, I'm sure we'll vi revisit the dungeons again once we've had a lot more experience with them. I mean, we're trying to base a whole show around my half through one of the dungeons and, like, the rest of the hosts did, like, collectively three runs or four runs together. So, anyway... The guests this week are not members of Team Legacy, actually. Uh, they are various guilds. Uh, Strider, I think, mentioned a couple of his. Um, Azendi, are you in a guild at the moment? Not really. I'm mostly with friends, but I'll be joining several. So we'll see when the game comes. And Todd, I think you mentioned you are between guilds? More or less between guilds at the moment. There's, <laughs> um, there's an Azura-only guild, um, the Clockwise Collective, that's um, going to be starting up. So I'm a member of that as well, but I also have non-Azura characters, so they obviously won't be in that guild. Yeah, but... <laughs> That's where multi-guilding comes in. But but those characters yeah. won't be able to call other people Buka, so they're clearly <laughs> inferior. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> if you get, like, I want to play the class and race that lets me use racial slurs, but in a good way. Yeah, that's, look, that's what I'm looking for. Um, all right, so... Let's check out our first link for today. Uh, this is on the Guild Wars 2 Codex. It's gw2codex.com. Now, this has a, a generator for, you know, like a, like a skill cal uh, calculator, like many of these other websites do, and it has uh, builds that people have posted. This is another pretty good one uh, website for that. But this is a very cool high-res images of various uh, locations. So if you click on here, it's basically a Google Maps thing that you can move around. Now, it doesn't wow. zoom in with the mouse wheel. But you can click this to zoom in and, and look at the, it's like a super high res, and it has all the locations of the various, uh, and, and even the names, look at this, even got the names uh, in the hearts, and tells you what levels they are, like somebody did a whole lot of work on this. Actually, oh, they missed one, they missed one! Found it. Uh-oh, someone's in trouble. <laughs> I get a prize, I guess, I don't know. So anyway, uh, they have all the different areas that were in the beta weekend. We have these three here, and then we got these here. Because um, this was, yeah, this was the Fields one, Garrett and Fields, that they added in Beta Weekend number two. So all this seems to be from Beta Weekend number two. So, highly recommend you, highly recommend you guys check that out. Um, now, 
Here's one we can talk about a little bit. The Golden Rules of Guild Wars 2. This is a blog post recently, and uh, this one struck me, actually much like the last one in some ways, as a bit more PR than real down-to-earth, like, this is how we're designing the game. Like, there's a lot of really great game design articles that have appeared on the blog. The last two felt way more PR than those ones did in the past. I don't know. Am I out of line, Strider? What do you think? I, I think that this new blog, with the uh, with the uh, announcement of the release date that came last week, I think they wanted to kind of fill the void because there's not going to be that much more information coming out. They wanted to give us something that would kind of settle us, but they wanted to do that in a way that shows that they ain't it is obviously a company that cares about the their fans and the players, and they wanted to really enforce that. Azendi, what did you think? Is this I think. Yeah, I think um, you have something about uh, Strider, but I think also it's to, you know, we have a release date, they want new people to the game as well, so it's kind of, I think, explaining a bit on how the, you know, how the game is and reinforcing these kind of different, you know, milestones that are, you know, being set out, so I think it's for new players as well, for people to get interested. Now, if it were any other studio, and I read this article, except maybe Valve. Like, there's very few other studios that I might make the exception for. But for most game studios, if, if, if I read this, I'd be like, okay, uh, that is probably a load of garbage, and that's probably just all PR. And if any of it is true, it's probably in a small way. But, I mean, Tot, is this something, do you think ArenaNet really took all of these to heart? Maybe not... You know, this is very puffed up and fluffy, but is there a kernel of truth behind this in the arena net studio? I think so, yeah. I mean, having played Guild Wars 1 and, and things in that game, you know, sometimes things would take longer to be implemented. You know, fans would be asking for something and it wouldn't happen for a little while, and then it did. And they are a company, you know, they, you, the last release for that game was in 2007, and they're still updating the game. But Guild Wars, um, the first one, you know, you've still got content coming out. They've added areas every year. They do events for it. They're, they're a company that really do respect their fans and they want their fans to think well of them. So I think absolutely this is, you know, this is certainly behind one of the ways they produce the game. Is this, these are how they do it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I mean, uh, so if anybody hasn't checked it out, it's, it's basically a list of uh, key sort of elements to design. Like, when they're designing something, this is the, these are the things they always try to check. Like, okay, is it creating a consistent world that, that feels living and breathing? Is it help our cooperation goal? Does it, does it help our goal of playing the game instead of the user interface? I mean, these are things that they have talked about in the past, and I think it's clear if you played Guild Wars 2 that all of these things are real. Uh, like, if you Definitely. look at the cities, they go to great lengths to the levels of detail to make them feel alive. Cooperation. We already have seen all of the ways mechanically that they have changed the way that the game is in order to make cooperation work, etc. So I don't feel like there's anything in here that's really like BS, this is just to pump up the fanboy's ego kind of a thing, but I, am I wrong? Is there anybody that disagrees? It, it, it feels puffy, but at the same time, I can't deny that any of it's true. Well, I also want to point out that, I mean, I do agree with you, but I also want to take it one step further and say that for anyone who's been in the beta and has been on the beta forums, Anet really does listen to the feedback that they that that yeah. uh, that is provided to them within reason of course but when but people someone when, says you can go. sorry someone said in the chat that the you know the third event is going to be the selling point and i think that's absolutely true i mean we have a release people are going to catch on to this now it's you know it's a new bandwagon um so yeah i think it's the new perspective plays absolutely Excellent, excellent. I mean, as you point out about the forum thing, we've look how many responses. What was there? I think I calculated like six or seven hundred responses after the first beta weekend by ArenaNet staff. I mean, now that's divided up around twenty or forty people. I don't know exactly how many different people they had posting there, but that's still a massive amount of feedback to mm -hmm. the fans. You know, many of those could have just gone un. You know, they could have read it, understood it, and ignored it because it wasn't actually an issue but instead they respond and say here's why i don't agree with you and this is why it's going to stay the way it is or here's why i agree with you but we're going to change it this way or, or something like that it's just it was just an amazing yeah okay enough, enough. It, 
it's true. But, I mean, they had it. They hadn't asked me anything on Reddit as well. So mm -hmm. I think they're very, very keen on keeping you know contact with players, and they pop out into game and they respond and they talk and they you know they're very, very talk you know a talkative company. So I um, have back to uh, yeah. the, uh, the the MMO manifesto that they released a couple. I think that was a year ago, and when Re said that they want the player to feel like a part of the game. And I think that can be taken many ways. And one of the ways that they can take that is by listening to the feedback that they get and taking it to heart, taking everything to heart, whether or not they agree or disagree with it. Whether, like I said, it's the fact that they listen that matters. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. So, again, that was a pretty interesting uh, blog post. Not my favorite by far, but it's, it's certainly got its, its, its merits. And uh, this is this next link is a video I found on YouTube from uh, our our friend here Guild Source. I hadn't heard about them before, but I'm going to pay attention more because this is an awesome video, uh, and we're going to take a look at this right now. Um, point you can get in the That's here we go. Let me switch over to it. There it is. Building back there, and I kind of can see that it goes towards Kylo. So I'm like, oh, is it Kylo? But I've been to Kylo. And, uh, so he's in the mists right now on these test yeah. things where you're okay. firing the trebuchets or whatever in the mist, and he is trying to find a way like out of that. Like he already climbed out and around the outside of the mist island, the training island. So he's already found his way out, and this is sort of a story that takes place over eight minutes of how he's going to make it out and like try to get somewhere else. And it's actually quite amazing, and there's a payoff at the end. So I highly recommend you guys, yeah, highly recommend you guys check it out because the, it's very good narration. It's just a great fun video. So there's a link to that in the show notes. It's called Outlaw Isle, or or a, a new continent is what they called it on YouTube here. But highly recommend you guys check that out. Very cool video. The last thing I wanted to uh, talk about video-wise is that it looks to be that uh, Wooden Potatoes, we've talked about a couple of times on the show, Guild Wars 1 Lore Master, has a new lore video. This one's about the characters of the story. So you may have seen a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, videos so far. He did one about the map and one about the, uh, the, the sort of fall of Ascalon story and both of those are amazing this one's also amazing and by the way there's a bit on this screen here somewhere you might find a couple of easter eggs I mean you got Johan <laughs> Collinson we've got Brian O'Michael So Reesby uh, Sarah Me Jewel <laughs> and if you pay a little attention in the background you might find a few hidden gems over I here think I, I think I did see a Norton Holbrack that was a play on Collins name oh yeah yeah, I th I, and I think it was that Johan Collinson or something like that. So the artist for this video actually uh, emailed me to point out that there's a couple of hidden Tales of Tyria related Easter eggs in there. So I, uh, I highly, highly recommend that you guys check out these videos because it's so well narrated. It's so entertaining, just engaging and gripping. It's not like somebody reading from a textbook. Like whoever does the writing for this, I don't know if it's Wooden Potatoes himself or not, but it's fantastic. Huge props out to them. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to point out is for people that may or may not know, the Guild Wars 2 soundtrack is officially on sale. Are you guys buying this? Signed by Jeremy Sewell. Wow. Did that come with the collector's edition, or is that... Yeah, there's a best According... of with the collector's edition. A best of, yeah. A best of. Best I'm not of, sure if that's the same yeah. thing. I don't think it's the same thing. This is a four-disc collection. So this is all of the music, wow. including unreleased music that we haven't seen yet. Or and I'll get my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> it's thirty dollars for the four disc collection, and it, and I guess while supplies last, they have a limited time uh, offer of uh, being signed by Jeremy Sewell himself. I well, am actually thinking about. I don't know. I don't usually get soundtracks, but I might be get this. I'm probably gonna get that right after the show. <laughs> the link is in the show notes, so if you guys want to check that out, it's at talesofteria.com, or if you're watching this on YouTube, it's right there in the description. There's a show notes link. All right, so. I guess that brings us to the dreaded conversation that everybody's been trying to... <laughs> no, Tales of Tyria, don't go there. It's a dark place. But don't worry. Fear not. We will not be going down the realm of erotic roleplay. That is not what we're here for. <laughs> that, is, that is decidedly <laughs> incorrect. Uh, that's not how you play Guild Wars 2. <laughs> that's not the way it's meant to be played. So... What we are going to talk about is role-playing as in getting immersed in the storyline and trying to consider...
as a different person than yourself. And a lot of people like doing this, and it's called acting. And there's a lot of actors in the world who make a career out of pretending to be a different character and thinking like that character and trying to... Um, and trying to really put themselves in that character's shoes and get rid of their own memories and their own biases and take on a new set of biases and memories and make choices that are different than ones they might make in the same situation. Now, there's also a sort of cadre of amateur actors that go to things like improv classes and improv groups, and there's also other groups that do community theater. So there's a lot of people that do this kind of thing in the real world and are not shunned for it. I just want to point that out right at the beginning <laughs> because there's also a lot of people in the gaming community that do this and are not shunned for it. Well, mostly. Well, uh, kind of. Well, a few I outlying think... groups like Will Wheaton's um, and Penny Arcade. Uh, but that's known <laughs> as role-playing, tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons or Burning Wheel or any number of other uh, t uh, role-playing games, uh, Pathfinder, etc. That is also a not shunned version of this. So when it goes online, for some reason, everybody gets scared because they've heard stories of the, you know, people like, oh, my char breathes heavily as he sees <laughs> the beauty of your leaves. Like, no, that's not what we're here for. You're doing it all wrong. So with all that having been said, Azendi, what does role-playing in an MMO mean? What does it contain? What do you guys actually do? Well, I know about you compare it to acting, but I personally would say a bit more about creative writing. And I know that a lot of the people in the community are very much into, you know, creative writing, becoming authors themselves. Uh, and I think that there's a lot into that as well, because, you know, some people just enjoy writing and this is a good way of doing it. Um, and you create stories. I think it's people who enjoy stories and who enjoy you writing. You know what? That's, that's a very it. good point. It's, it's less the acting side and more of the story side, which is why I jumped to improv, because improv is all about creativity mm -hmm. uh, right there. But, yeah, so Strider, is that what your, your interest in it is? Is it a lot of the, the, the writing concept? Yeah, pretty much. My interest, like uh, Zendi said, is in the storytelling part, but what I like about role-playing is that it's more of an interactive storytelling type of thing where you and someone else or a group of people, you collaborate with these characters that you have in your head and you put them together and through that you put together the storyline that's based in this world, which in this case is Tyria. And that's why I jumped to the tabletop RPG because that's collaborative storytelling. Yes, it's like, so exactly. in the MMO is like an extension of that because as we all know, MMOs – extend from Dungeons & Dragons tabletop role-playing games, right? So, uh, Tot, is, I know that you're one of the writers at, uh, at the GW2RP.com, is that right? Yeah, I was uh, writing before I was role-playing, and it's, it's it, role-playing to me is very much a form of collaborative writing. I mean, I've done collaborative writing projects in the past where, you know, you sit together and you discuss where the story's going next and what's going to be happening, and that's very much like role-playing. You have your characters, you know what your characters would do, you don't what the other person's characters would do so that's where you're you're working together and you get a story that perhaps you didn't expect because when you're writing on your own you know what's going to happen when you're role playing with other people they could do anything and um, you've got to react to that at this, that time so it's um it's it's very much this interactive sort of ongoing live story absolutely and and then that sort of real-time nature of it uh, again, sort of brings me back to the acting, and then you have to be able to put yourself in your character's shoes and get into their mindset and be able to react uh, consistently, I guess is the best word, right away. So now, um, so that's, that sort of explains some of the reasoning behind why a lot of people role play. Either they come at it from the, from the writing or the storytelling aspect, or they, they enjoy the whole process of, of acting in some sense or improv in some sense. Um, now, this is sort of an old tradition. I mean, wh wh this goes back through a number of uh, MMOs, probably back to EverQuest, I would assume. Is, have any, how, how, what's the first situation that you guys have ever been role-playing in an MMO? Start with Zendi. In an MMO, I have to say it's World of Warcraft, but I was role-playing long, long before uh, I started role-playing in MMOs. Uh, but yeah, you know... Well, the Warcraft probably, but I mean, roleplay, we have forum roleplay where it's basically, you just write, it's like Gemma's this, it's a collaborative story. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Strider, what was your first in interaction with roleplaying? Was it also in World of Warcraft? 
in the brief time that I played World of Warcraft, yes, it was there. But the main games that I role played in were Guild Wars One and Lord of the Rings Online. Now, those are two games that really have a fantastic sort of uh, story and lore behind them. Obviously, I mean, you got Lord of the Rings yeah. with this, which is you know. Tolkien, the master world builder, had an entire textbook called the Silmarillion to, to draw from if you want to do lore and role playing in that. I did a, way back then. I did read that. No, it was... <laughs> I, I tried to fight my way through it, and I couldn't. I couldn't make it all the way. I just skipped to the it's end where they started read. talking yeah. about things that were. It was like right before the Third Age. Like they talked about Aragorn's. Uh, sort of younger life and when he interacted with like the grandparents of all the people that he interacts with in the actual story anyway we're getting off topic this is not tales of the rings online so um, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh let's let's jump back here now i i say that to sort of contrast it with guild wars which is entirely a made-up property in a game world it's not something that's all written out as a book form which books are easy to sort of tell a story in because they're a story, but so what, how did Guild Wars become a good enough lore environment? Is it, did it stand out from the crowd of other games for you, Strider? When I originally went into Guild Wars, I didn't have any intention of role-playing in it because back then I was still a bit of a novice at role-playing. I, I, I had been role-playing through tabletops, but it is a bit different when you get into the MMO environment. But what really got me hooked, like what you said, was the lore because... There is so much rich lore and rich story that people like Reese Osby, like people that there's so much lore that they have put into it, so much work that they have put into their writing and into building the game world. It's a living, breathing world that it just allows you to immerse yourself in itself. Absolutely. So, uh, Todd, what was your first MMO? Is it also uh, World of Warcraft or Guild Wars? Or does it go further back? For me, actually, technically, although I did roleplay for about five minutes in World of Warcraft, I'm, I'm much nearer to roleplaying in an MMO environment. Guild Wars 2 will be my first sort of major time roleplaying. As I say, um, I come from more of a, a writing stories and a collaborative stories background to it. So I've kind of I fitted in with the roleplaying community, and it's, it's a very welcoming community to new people. But, um, yeah, so I've done some role-playing in betas and, and on, in the forums, but uh, this, is, this is kind of where my role-playing journey begins as well. So. Excellent. So now <clears throat> there are sort of different levels of role-playing. I mean, some people, I assume, in the community like to take it further than others. Uh, I, mean, I mean, certainly in, within the community that I am in, I'm in uh, sort of a live-action role-playing game called The Realms here in, uh, in the northeast part of the United States, which is if you've got a spectrum of LARPs and you're talking about ones that are be like, you can't have cell phones, you can't leave, you have to constantly be in character 100% of the time, and the ones that are like, Meh, we want to hit each other with swords. Like, mine is way over on the we want to hit ourselves with swords thing. Uh, so th there's that spectrum within, for example, the LARP community, which is a lot of role-playing and in, in it's just live action instead. Now, I assume that translates into sort of the MMO community as well. Are there people that want to be more cons more immersed, I guess you could say? Anybody? Um, ab absolutely, I think. I mean, a lot of us contrary to popular belief, are actually hardcore role players and raiders. I've raided so much in World of Warcraft before I started role playing. And then there are some people who just don't leave in character. Um, I, they're quite rare, I'd say. But I think there's definitely a degree. Okay. Excellent. Uh, so has has there ever been like an issue within the community where, you know, some people are like, they're not staying in character long enough. And it's just been like a schism where like some people want to be more hardcore about role playing than others. Or is this sort of a sort of more, I guess, um, welcoming and, and live and let live community? I'm just curious because I haven't been involved in it. Well, our community is live and let live. We don't chastise people for role-playing how they want, believing what they want. But when when it comes to the actual, you mentioned the spectrum, in MMO terms, we have light, medium, and heavy role-play. Mm -hmm. And light role-play is, an, an example would be just someone who gets in character just to walk into a tavern and do some interaction with another character in a tavern. And the moment they leave, they go out and they go into the mist and kill 50 guys or whatever. Medium role play is like someone who would be in character in the tavern, then go out of the tavern and run around 
in the game world doing PvE events and quests and stuff like that. And then heavy role play is someone who is in character 24-7 from right when they log in. Everything that they do is in character, what their character would do. Gotcha. Now, Strider, is it a requirement to role play that you speak in old English? Yes, thusly, <laughs> he went to thy father's farm and slew many dragons. Thy, <laughs> thine. In our community, which just crested 1,600 people, I think I have only encountered one person who does that. Okay. So, that is so that's sort of a bad stereotype, time. then. <laughs> we don't do that in Guild Wars 2 role players, no. Okay. And that's, that's kind of nice to hear from me, because I'm not very good at it, if you can't tell. <laughs> no. I can't either. I, I, don't think there's many, I don't think there's many people that could do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound so ridiculous, right? Why do you put E's at the end of things? Ye oldy shoppy. I don't know. Who knows? Well, all those, right. those E's at the end weren't even pronounced at the time, so... Oh, well, you know, oh, that's right. probably why they got rid of them then. Why do we need an E at the end of old? We never say it. Then I'm going to stop writing it. You know what? We've only got so much ink. <laughs> it hurts. I don't have many feathers left for my ink. So, uh, all right. So, let's talk about specifically Guild Wars 2. Now, you talk about storytelling and sort of uh, creating your own story. Now, in an, in an MMO kind of environment, there's a lot of constraints because you can't just go on an adventure and have whatever adventure you want. You're kind of limited to the adventure within the game world. How does Guild Wars 2 work as an MMO? Is it better than others, worse than others? Azendi? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so I think Guild Wars 2 common for the role-playing community is that we kind of disregard these personal stories. We make our own personal stories. And as long as you, you know, conform to the law and you don't really have to take the game world into account aside from, you know, the common conflicts, the dragons, you know, the centaurs. Um, but you don't actually have to conform to personal stories. You can make your own and you tell your tale by a role-play. Okay, so you sort of the, the, the story of your character is the story of the things that you physically do in the game, not necessarily the things that the that the game throws at you. It kind of reminds me of um, uh, Left 4 Dead 2 or Left 4 Dead 1, because the story <laughs> of that game was not, um, okay, so they started here, and then they went there, and then they went there, and they said this to each other, and then they went to the top of the hospital and tried to get away. The story is, is different every time, because it's the story of literally what happens to your characters. We got yeah. to this part of the subway station, and then there was a horde, or then there was a tank, and that's different every time, and in the story is not pre-scripted, like Half-Life 2. You go here, and there's always an attack by the big things this way, or you go there, and there's always a, an ambush, or, you know, whatever. So the story is what happens to your character and not the things that the that ha that are written into the game world right so strider is that sort of the same way that you look at it the way i look at it is a, more or less a combination of both of them i personally i don't include the uh character choices that you get at character creation i don't include those in my character too limiting or i i feel like it's too limiting in a sense, but it's just not my style, I, I, I guess, would be the easiest way to describe it. I prefer to have control over my character's history 100%. Yeah, because so, go you're not allowed to make an evil, like, m yeah. mofo <laughs> in Guild yeah. Wars 2. Every character you make has to be a triumphant hero of good and righteousness. If it's not close to Superman, then you can't do it. <laughs> you can make an, a necromancer that raises the dead of their enemies to fight for them, but they can't be evil. They can't do bad yes. things. <laughs> that is that is the limits of the character creation, but on the Guild Wars 2 role players forums and the biography sections, there are quite a number of people who do play Nightmare Court Silvari or things like that. And that isn't frowned upon in the community because we believe that everyone has the, the right to play who they want as long as, as it conforms to the lore of Guild Wars 2. Okay. Now, going into the actual game world, I embrace the, the the dynamic event system as a catalyst for roleplay because instead of having to sit down and say, okay, I need to come up with a conflict for all of us to go through now, the game does it for me. If, if, I, if we're running around and we see a group of bandits is attacking this village, we'll just roleplay through that and see what happens. Mm -hmm. 
absolutely. So uh, uh, is there anything else taught uh, that uh, besides, let's say, the dynamic event system, which is all uh, obviously really key and useful to the role playing community? Is there anything else that Guild Wars 2 does mechanically that sort of aids friendly game to the Guild Wars uh, the uh, role playing community? I think um, it, it it helps. I mean, the, the, the game's um, payment model helps for, for one because, you know, you're you're trying to attract a community. You're trying to get people into it, and and role players come from all sorts of different games. So, having the attraction that the game doesn't have a sub is is a, a bonus as well, because you know you've got that one expenditure, and then you're playing. But then also you've got the fact that the classes are not. You haven't got that holy trinity where you've got to have one of each, or you're you know you're hopeless. You can have as many different characters as you want. If your friends are all playing characters that are elementalists and you're an elementalist, you can still go out there and you can still party up and and have adventures together, and you're not going to be penalised for that. And I think that's um, a a big advantage. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, I I mean there are a lot of other things. For example, the role playing community I know was one of the big ones that was looking for those uh, the chat boxes, the sort of chat bubbles. <laughs> That I, that I understand is very important to the role playing community because it really helps you see the characters who you know who's doing things. It actually kind of reminds me of something I read in a blog post recently about playing the game and not the UI. So that's kind of awesome. <laughs> I have to say. No, I I have to say that I must have been the only role player who is kind of against chat bubbles because I think it looks very cluttered. Uh, oh, really? I know that a lot of people. Yeah, because you know sometimes it gets very crowded. And, you know, it's a wolf- <laughs> A non-believer. <laughs> I did, I did, I did still support it. I always support, you know, with these, but I didn't think it was necessary. But seeing that we had, you know, short-range talk, you know, we got a say channel. That was very important to us. Excellent. So, uh, and there... that's another example of ArenaNet listening to the fans. Those scenes weren't in the game, and they people were petitioning for them, and they were mm-hmm. implemented. And I think that's another major advantage is to have a developer that listens to what the fans want. So. Were is there anything that's really missing that the Guild Wars 2 uh, RP community would would petition for? You know, if if they sat down with ArenaNet Dev and said this would help us tremendously as an RP community, what would it be? Well, you can go with Andy. <laughs> um, role playing tag on the name of the server. I know that's not going to happen ever, but you know, it's something that would help us. You know, concentrate the community tremendously. But that's just like a dream. Okay, so yeah. so yeah, I mean that 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 is a big sort of contention is ArenaNet doesn't want to make and enforce sort of a role playing server, but you're saying all they need is a tag. We just want a yeah. way to com- to collect everybody together. Absolutely, I think that would help us so much. Just you know, new. I mean, the role playing community is so dedicated right now. We have so many people who gathered here, you know, before the release really. But people who then jump in later, they might not do the research that we've done. Um, it would just be easier for us to, you know, gather together if we had a role-playing tag. Yeah, because, so you're saying everybody who is currently interested in role-playing already knows. I think Tarnished Coast is the current, you know, potential yes. candidate, uh, unofficial candidate for role player, role-playing community. But a, a newcomer might not see and might not know that the role-playing community even exists and might roll we, on that uh, server or not roll on that server. <clears throat> we currently have two role playing servers and that's Petrified Forest for the EU oh, community the EU and side. then okay. Tarnished Coast. Yeah, exactly. And then Tarnished Coast for the uh, North American. Um but I'm thinking that we probably will need more soon because I mean we've 1600 members um and probably more out there that don't even know of our existence. So uh, it um, might be. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be like seven or ten thousand per server. I have to imagine. I think I remember World of Warcraft had numbers around that size, um, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I'm pretty sure that you could you could probably fit the entire community right now on a server. Now, if you happen to roll on the server with a whole bunch of other, you know, communities of various sizes, then you might have a problem. So uh, yeah. it's certainly something to consider uh, thinking about. And and yeah, it, I agree that it would be nice to have that tag there. Um, because it is a sizable niche in the community, but there are other aspects that some people would ask for, like name consistency checkers and, and people moderating and making sure that people aren't breaking other people's immersion. Uh, I believe that's been done in other games like uh, World of Warcraft and things like that. Um, is that something that actually helps the community, do you think? 
Uh, Strider? I don't... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Zendi. Go ahead. I think she muted oh, herself. We, I can't hear you. Now it looks like it's you muted yourself. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, no, I don't think that works at all. Uh, I think it's pointless. We just need a tag. Sorry, Strider, go have the word. <laughs> go ahead. Well, I am sorry to disagree with you, Zendi, but I do not feel that roleplay tags would... I feel that they would bring more problems to the greater game rather than the good they would bring to just our community because I'm, I'm looking firstly from the world versus world PvP standpoint. If people see a roleplay tag, they're going to say, roleplay, bad PvP, don't go there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that would kind of take a, a, a large chunk of the game away from role players if they kind of just segregate the community into that. That's just my opinion, though. Now, wait a minute, Not wait true. a minute, wait a minute. We can do PvP. I was just going to say, are you saying that role players can PvP? Because I, I have heard different. <laughs> I am saying oh, that we it PvP. Is, I am saying that it is a stereotype, but it is not a true stereotype because maybe, I love PvP. Maybe Gemma can promote her little idea. We actually have a woo 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 dubstep. <laughs> yeah, on um, on the roleplayers um, website at the moment, we have two alliances forming for World vs. World. There's one for the North American server and one for the EU server, where we're getting organized now, and we're going to try and sort of tie the roleplaying community together so that when we go into World vs. World, we can communicate with each other, we can coordinate, and, you know, we're people that are used to organizing events for roleplaying, so we can organize events for fighting other players as well. So... That's true. Now, I have to ask, because World vs. World... We haven't ever really acknowledged this on the show. It makes no sense. Like, why are these three factions fighting each other? What are they doing? Like, we know it takes place in the mists, and that, that kind of explains away the fact that you have to even explain this because it's happening in, like, a dreamland kind of a thing. I, I think they kind of explained at one point they're reenacting old battles or something, and that's how they're sort of rebooting it every two weeks. Um, is that a way that you're going to play it in a consistent manner, or are you just going to accept sort of the Days X Machina, like, okay, we accept the fact that we're here fighting, now we're going <laughs> to roleplay based on that premise? <laughs> I think I remember somewhere, I don't remember if this is true or not, but I remember being informed that ArenaNet claimed that the mist was, in terms of world PvP, was alternate realities connected by the mist, and you're fighting against another alternate reality of the area or something well, like that's that. that's deep. A multiverse, I, I think, yeah. Yeah, and, and going into like the whole multiverse of Tyria thing. Now, don't quote me on that. I'm not sure if that's true. I, I kind of remember something like that. The multiverse of Tyria. <laughs> Each server is like its own universe, man. And like they're connected with strings through the multiverse, man. Like totally. That's that's awesome. I didn't even think of that. I can't <laughs> believe they're bringing particle physics into this. Quantum theory. Oh, man. ArenaNet's thought of everything. <laughs> That never hit me until It's now. worth bearing in mind, not everyone's going to be in character for this. I mean, we are, sure. we are a community, no. and although we do roleplay a lot, we don't roleplay all the time, not all of us do. So some people are going to be, you know, possibly fighting in character, some people are going to be fighting out of character. But it's something that, you know, just because we roleplay sometimes doesn't mean we're always roleplaying. We have other interests as well. People play other games that aren't about roleplaying. So it's, you know, it's, it's not, we're not one-trick ponies. All right, so uh, I, I understand that there's actually a couple of role-play PvP guilds as well that are out there that are trying to use sort of military terminology. I mean, imagine, I was just trying to imagine, like, when we were talking about the scale of role-playing from, like, sort of only a little bit to, like, super hardcore. Like, if Team Legacy took how hardcore we take World vs. World as a game and a competition <laughs> and took it to the role-playing extreme, that would be really weird. Like, I could just imagine how hardcore we are as PvPers, and then you take, like, we go on a, on a, on a raid on, like, the, the, the Galadin fields or something, and it's like, everybody's in character going, Look out! There's centaurs at the peak! Summon the next brigade! And it's like, it would be so fun, though! Oh, man. I would enjoy the hell I don't that. Think, I don't think you really have time to write in PvP at the same time. I think that's where the issue is. I mean, we're writers. We have to, you know, write well, notes and stuff. I just... PvP, I, at least I regard it as something completely different. I do want to quote someone here, and this is a quote from Shadow Sin. He made a good point that it's less of a pain to roleplay 
the aftermath of the battle rather than role playing in the middle of the battle yeah. itself. Then things can get to be a real pain in the posterior. But yes. if you just, you know, we have finished the battle. Now we're going to role play our battle and role play us running over there. Oh, okay. So it's, after the battle, you have it, to sit there yeah. and mourn all your dead. That's, that's, you have to take it, him. Yes. He was so young. Oh, wait, he's back. Okay. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a while to run back from the point. <laughs> well, we'll probably be role-playing the, the great victory that we've been oh, having of course. Over, over our oh, enemy. Yeah. And of course, great that's victory. when you actually get to use the beer that you buy you know, from the from the people in the cities. You can buy, like, the alcoholic beverages, and you can be like, yes, right after a victory. I think I might do that anyway, just for fun. Because it sounds now, fun. I did have an experience in the second beta weekend event where we were in World vs. World, and we were defending a key from a siege, and we had people in front of the gate fighting, but then we had, I think it was two or three people sitting on the walls trying to role-play directing orders, and it actually worked out <laughs> fairly well because, oh, kudos. like, they were calling out, like, you know, they're flanking from the right, and then you'd see, like, a chunk of people would just rush over there and defend them. <laughs> it was, it was really cool. interesting. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, Gemma, we, you, we were pitching as Reddit, actually, um, and we suffered a major, major loss, I dare say, but we did hold our own, and, uh, you know, the entire map was just fully, fully red, I think it was, and we decided to reclaim our lands, and we actually did take the keep. We were very happy about that. So we can hold our own sometimes. Yeah, Petrified Forest held it for uh, an hour or two, I think, against Reddit, so, you know, <laughs> we... we... <laughs> That's a victory in and of itself. Those damn goon swarm. Oh, they're going to be mad at me for saying that. <laughs> Just wait till 4chan comes and replaces Reddit in that battle. They're gonna oh, sure. oh, yeah. <laughs> or the goon swarm. Either one is all scary. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's actually really, really good to know. I mean, my personal feeling of it is when I was going in the beta weekends and I would... Uh, be playing through like a PVE zone and I really enjoy being in the world and kind of seeing this amazing stuff like we've talked about time and time again on the show enjoying the little things like all the consistencies like Don Tain not Don Tain the Epi something or other the guy on the YouTube video we, we had a couple of times um, speaks in a thick accent he pointed out how deep those dynamic events go how you can have you know so you can help somebody try to collect a bunch of uh, meat for his fire and it turns into a giant bear attack <laughs> and you just follow it all the way through. You can see the story unraveling. And those details are really cool until you're traveling with a group of other people and all they're talking about is their newest hammer skill or I'm going to unlock the next utility skill. And it pulls you out of the moment. It's immersion breaking. It's yes. a pain in the ass. So I found out that when I was by myself, I had a whole lot more fun, quote unquote, grinding through the PVE area. But I would, I, I kind of wish I had a group of other people that would really be in that moment and not just not ro necessarily role play like forsooth for the bear has gotten away we must chase it but just just <laughs> not refer to everything mechanically and instead refer as if you're actually in the world and say it looks like the centaurs are attacking we got to head over there instead of saying let's port to the top point so we can get that dynamic event like th that tiny change it makes a big difference to me i don't know about you guys well, I think yeah. that, yeah, I, I am two completely different players. I'm a gamer and then I'm a role player. So I can totally go and do, oh, go, let's go grind there or something like that. I can be a total immersion breaker. But I, I, I completely agree with what you say. It really is, you know, sucking into the game. Uh, it just it just feels way more interesting like you're going going through the story than if you're just doing this because it's the next thing that popped up on your HUD. I mean, that makes me feel like I'm back in World of Warcraft because I'm not paying attention to anything that's going on. I don't read the quest text. I don't care. It's telling me to hit that thing. I'm going to hit that thing until it falls over. That's, that's all I'm doing. And then I'm going on to the next thing. And that just feels so boring to me. But when you stop and slow down and take a look at the world around you, it's freaking awesome, man. I just can't get over yeah. it. I gotta take I a break. Think, <laughs> I think yes. that um, that kind of trails into a little bit of, I, I I do believe that in everyone there is at least a little bit of a light role player, and whenever someone is craving that moment of being immersed in it, of actually experiencing it without any distractions about what hammer skill you just used or who you just blew up with a fireball, you can take advantage of the guesting system that Guild Wars 2 has and guest over for a little bit onto the role-playing server 
if you know mm -hmm. someone who is a light role player or who would be willing to, you know, role play with you on your level and just enjoy it for a little bit and then go back. Okay, so that actually brings me to the last point I wanted to talk about is how do you get involved with the current Guild Wars 2 role-playing scene? Because as far as I can tell, your, your sort of website, your organization is the, the primary place that role-players go to for both EU and, and, the, and the North America. How do people get involved? Just write in stuff. That's as simple as it is. Just join, just join the forums? Just sign join up? up. And and try to talk box. to people. Yeah, try to talk to people. Build connections. Ask for you know, ask for help. Ask questions. It's we're all very open and we're all you know we're approachable. We like to help. So uh, I know that get on the servers, <laughs> get on the servers yeah. in the beta and when the game launches because there will be people role playing there. It's not like the first Guild Wars where everything was in instances and you couldn't see the role playing community. People are going to be there. They're going to be role playing in the towns. They're going to be role playing out in the environments because they're so stunning. You can't help it. And yeah. um, you, you, it's not just going to be tavern role playing, sitting around making jokes. It's people are going to be out having adventures in the world. And if you see someone in character, or if you feel like being in character for a while, go to the petrified forest or the tarnished coast and find someone else that's walking that's usually a good sign if they're walking oh instead um, of running <laughs> yeah well, running we're, we're all the hoping... time breaks my immersion <laughs> yeah. well we that really is... really want a walk toggle rather that than just a key that you can bind oh, yes. at the moment you can manually bind a key to walk but you have to keep holding it down which is you kind of makes typing hard so the next campaign that we have is to get the walk toggle but um, yeah walking is usually a good sign that someone's in character yeah, absolutely. Okay, and uh, so there are, or um, I guess, events that you're that you're planning to run. Like when the game goes live, what's something that your community is going to organize? Like, what are the different kinds of things that people can participate in? Uh, Strider. Um, well, Janto is organizing this big launch event. It's going to be a combination of a writing contest in character, uh, like you know, first person writing narratives, third person story writing, and then we're going to follow that up with most likely an an in-game event about a week or two after launch we're going to have a huge celebration in one of the main cities probably divinity's reach or lion's arc and it's going to be open to all members of the community not just the north american side so we're we're, we're trying to be to uh, put forth events that have multiple ways of people can get multiple ways that people can get involved so. and okay. They're, and uh, we're going to have writing contests, and we're actually going to have prizes. Like someone is, has offered to make uh, hand sculptures of your character for you. Oh, wow. Yes. For like the, yeah. the winner of the, the contest, basically? For the winner, yes. Are, so are these North writing American contests, figure. are they backstory? Like create a character and write a backstory for it? It can be anything you want as long as it's within Guild Wars 2. Ah, okay. So you have to write a story that takes place within the, the Guild Wars 2 timeline, essentially? Yes, essentially, yes. Oh, that's really cool. Uh, and it, it seems to me that one of the advantages of, of these kind of the writing aspect of role-playing is the whole, uh, basically you get to create a character and then you get to make all the decisions for that character. So you can have the, the character have, uh, you know, bad luck or he makes or she makes a poor decision and that leads to this section of their life which is how they learned how to do this and now they are a bigger better person for it you can like really it's it's like playing god to some extent I mean, yes. you can mold and like, then this happened and the character had a horrible day <laughs> yes the uh one of the main appeals of, of many to role playing is the fact that you get to create this unique product that you, that you can call your own and you can take a step back from once in a while and say, I am proud of the work and progress that I have put into this character because it is my own unique product. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 I really miss the, the tabletop role-playing sessions that we have because uh, every, as anybody that's played a lot of good tabletop role-playing can tell you, there are so many amazing stories that come out of that that have nothing to do with the adventure that the GM set out to run. And that's the kind of... Uh, exploration and sort of engagement in a in, in a in a story that's just happening organically 
that ArenaNet has tried to cultivate already in Guild Wars 2 that you can take further with sort of a role-playing atmosphere. So uh, I, I'm really looking forward to doing something like that. And I might even make a show where we take a group of, of role players and we, we, we just role play spe these specific characters, just the story of those characters as they level up from 1 to 80. And uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll post that on as, as an ongoing episodic content on YouTube if we can find the right role players to make it awesome. So that's that something that's like sort a great of in the idea. background of my of my mind here because I can do all of the voices, but um, <laughs> I need more there than was, just me. <laughs> there was some demand in the chat box for you doing your char voice again. Can, can you tease them? Ridlock Brimstone is not the only one who can lead many char. <laughs> 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 Ritlock's voice in the game. It sounds like it sounds so great. And if you watch those um, those videos they put out a long time ago uh, that uh, that show the the voice actors actually doing their thing, like the guy who does his voice is amazing. And then I listen to his voice in the game, and I don't know if his voice is if the voice that he does has evolved or if they've done something effects wise to make his voice sounds the way it does in the game. Because I was doing some of the char personal story, and it uh, it definitely sounds different from what I remember. But maybe I'm just mis misremembering. Can I do a Silvari voice? I've never heard the Silvari. How can I do a Silvari voice? I've never heard him. I, I, I mean, I heard like a, sound vaguely in from Kate. I've never heard a male one, I don't think. Or maybe I did walking around Lion's Arch at one point, but <laughs> I can't do it. I don't know. What, is it going to sound French? I don't know. I can't tell you. Char is easy. It's French deep and guttural English. and animal. Yes. They how sound like do... Tata Zendi. How do you do plant? I don't know how to do plant. You just got to wave your arms around like limbs. <laughs> and sound vaguely Arthurian. Dude, yes. this is amazing. <laughs> no, wait, that's the wrong kind of plant. Okay, we're getting we're getting way off track here. Let's oh, rein it back in. Uh, <laughs> the last thing that I wanted to talk about here uh, is that we've got a couple of guild shoutouts this week. The first one is for Chronicles of Tyria, which just happens to be a sort of role playing community in and of itself. It's a it's a it's a PVE guild that has a lot of role playing uh, aspects to it to the point where they have their own uh, stories being written on this website as well. And they were asking for a shout out. Uh, they've got a bunch of uh, different uh, different writing. They've they've actually cracked. I think this is the group that cracked the new Crichton alphabet uh, they sort of uh, I think they've been working on the the somebody actually I don't know if there's this group or another one cracked the Asura alphabet as well kind of uh, as well as the dwarf if I'm not mistaken like there's a bunch of people that are like oh this is a code let's figure it out so uh, this is a really cool website it's got a lot of interesting you know you've got character descriptions uh, stories and things like that so if you're looking for sort of a PVE RP community slash guild. The Chronicles of Tyria looks like a good one. Now there's also the Chronicles of Tyria podcast, which is cotpodcast.com. And sorry, the Chronicles of Tyria is chroniclesoftyria.com. And the cotpodcast.com, they're on uh, episode three, and they're going over a lot of the lore of the various characters, um, and, and, sorry, of the various races. And I'm going to be on the next episode, which is going to be recorded uh, tomorrow, actually. Tomorrow's the ninth, right? So uh, what I don't know, I don't think they're recording it live but it'll be up uh the week at the, the the whenever they put the next episode up it's gonna be episode number four so if you guys want to check that out um if it's up by next week's show i'll put a link in the show notes for you guys it sounds like it's gonna be a good time <clears throat> so that is the chronicles of tyria guys now we've also got uh another one here the eventide concordant concordat that's uh, uh, a bit of a mouthful there, but uh, what you have here is a more traditional sort of guild, which is a role-playing, actually, did I say PvP guild? Yes, a PvP role-playing guild. This is one of the ones that you guys were talking about. Um, and though um, some of the members like structured PvP, they're still going to be doing a lot of world versus world, uh, you know, sort of in-character, out-of-character. Um, oh, that's a cool image. I didn't see that before. So uh, this is a, so if you're looking for a guild that's sort of going to do the more PvP aspects of uh, of role playing, this looks like a good one. So I'm going to give a quick shout out to both of these guys: Chronicles of Tyria and Eventide Concordant. And you can get links to those in the show notes. www.talesoftyria.com. This is episode number 39. And uh, with that, I guess uh, we're going to close out the show here. Any final comments about role playing? Anything that we didn't cover that you think that we missed, Azendi? Uh, no, no, really, just give it a go. Try out. It might be fun. Strider. Um, while we were on the uh, note of role-playing in PvP, I wanted to mention one of the community initiatives that is called the Alliance War Council within the role-play community. Oh, that it sounds is cool. A, I want to be a part of that. It is a coalition of guilds 
that is going to pretty much steamroll into into a world versus world representing the PvP, the the role playing servers. And ah, well, we look forward to the as as an official uh, as an official delegate of the Ascension Alliance. We look forward to uh, st- stomping on your grace. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Oh man, I, I I'm really excited actually to to see a lot of other sort of alliances showing up and to have the entire role playing community sort of rally around a central flag for world versus world. That's really exciting because you know a lot of people were worried like oh man I don't want to get matched up against you know an RP server because then it's going to be dead in world versus world. But clearly oh, that's God. not the case. Oh, oh no, the, no. <laughs> On the forums for the Alliance War Council, there are like detailed schematics, maps, <laughs> battle plans, everything you can. You play. don't yeah, mess with so the hard. Core RP community because when they go in, they go in, man. Yeah. Okay, so they're, it takes the high like seven point two minutes to make their run once we help them here, and then, <laughs> so oh man, oh, I can't yeah. wait. I gotta play it. Ah, oh, this is just this is just terrible for me. This is this is like the worst punishment I could have possibly inflicted on myself. Is why don't you host a weekly show about the game that you really really want to play but can't play? That would be fantastic. You, sh- you shot yourself in the foot. You sh- I did. Foot, I did, just a bit there. All right, Todd, any, any final uh, comments? I wanted to mention some of the um, EU side events. Obviously, mm-hmm. we talked about the, the ones in the North American side, and, and that contest is throughout the entire community. But on the EU server, a couple of weeks after the game launches, we're going to be having a big event in Lion's Arch. Um, a big festival, so with lots of stuff going on there. So, I mean, check out the uh, role playing website, role players website, to find out sort of more details about that. But that's going to be sort of one of the big things after launch. But also, again, just you know, join in. We're not people that sort of go, oh, I don't know you. I'm going to walk away. But that's not what role playing is about. It's about interacting with people and welcoming people and saying, yeah, come join us. It's you know, <laughs> be, be sort of be your character for a bit and then go do something else. Fine. That's that's you know whatever you want to do it is um it's a very inclusive thing not an exclusive thing role playing is all yeah, about like, meeting I just strangers like... <laughs> <laughs> meet a strange no, I, child I, I, i'd like to compliment the entire role playing community to be honest it's a very dedicated place i'm very happy to see what we created so far so good job everyone excellent so GW2RP.com will get you there, but it's also Guild Wars 2 Roleplayers.com. But GW2RP is easy to, to remember. There's also a link right there in the show notes for you guys. And uh, I think with that, we are just about ready to head out for today. We actually ended the show on time. It is 5.01 right now. One hour and one minute. I cannot believe it. I'm going to bring you guys on every week. <laughs> Those other ones talk too much. I'm just kidding. We'll have everybody, the normal crew, back on Vega, Freelancer, and Kai next week. And pff, screw hell if I know what the hell we're going to talk about. We got one more week before beta weekend number three. I'm going to have to think of something. Anyway, Bridger signing off. Thank you. Have a Thank good night. For Thanks me. for coming, Bye. guys. Thank you for coming. So that was a good show. And I think we covered a lot. And you guys were awesome. Yay. What kind of guitar Thank you. did you play? Thank you very much. I'm still really nervous. I don't know why I've got stage fright. <laughs> All right. So, oh, man, it was great. You guys did fantastic. Are we still live? Thank you so we're much. Still, we're still on the stream. I mean, the show's officially over. This is just the post-game, oh, the shit. post-show banter. <laughs> A word I did not say. <laughs> <laughs> Can we give a couple shout outs here? Yeah, go ahead. I want to give a shout out to uh, my guild Swift Shadow and Keepers of the Phoenix. I love you guys. I love everyone in those guilds. I also want to give a shout out to, you know, the the big alliances out there like Tyrion Accord, Alliance War Council. You guys are doing a marvelous job with the community. Keep it up. And I just want to give a shout out to everyone else in the community. I love you guys. I love you all. Oh, man. That can was, I go? That was so funny. Yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> I like to give. <laughs> Go ahead. I like to give a shout out to Niddy, uh, Gun, and Serena, and my boyfriend Jan, and of course Gemma, and well everyone else as well. You are all excellent. Thank you so much for the support. You know, thank you for the creation. You're all great. Thank you. All right. Whew. All right.
That was fantastic. Well, just just everyone. I've, <laughs> there's so many good writers on the um, on the the role playing site, and it's something that people should check out because lots of people are posting their stories up there and character bios, and there's some really really good writers out there and some really good artists as well. So I I think a shout out to all the creative people on there who've been posting their work because it's amazing. <laughs> awesome. Uh, somebody in the chat said that the birds have been really quiet. They are role playing very attentive listeners. From the other We're so room. Respectful. From the other yeah. room. That's why you can't hear them. But they're yelling. I can hear them. <laughs> I don't know why you can't hear them. I can hear them from the other room. Scream! Scream! Attention! I want attention! Aww. We're on the last <laughs> show. Snakes are quiet. I need to spend all day preparing for a show next time too, because this one went really well. All right, I'm gonna shut down the stream. Uh, thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll see you all next week at 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, though we might be switching that over to 7 eventually, but next week will be 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Thanks for watching. All right.